Good morning. And maybe a, a warm good morning to you this morning as we gather in God's house. A chilly day that the Lord has given us, but we do thank the Lord that we can gather on this new day, uh, this Sunday, as we worship our Lord. So, uh, continued Merry Christmas to you. We do find ourselves still in the Christmas season this morning. Uh, today is the second Sunday of Christmas. Oftentimes we don't have a second Sunday in Christmas, depending upon how the dates fall. Uh, but we are still in the Christmas season today, so continued Merry Christmas to you, and also a Happy New Year, as we find ourselves on the beginning days of this new year. Uh, Happy New Year to you, and a blessed new year as we live our lives in the Lord. Um, as we gather today, the Lord does bless us through His Word. Uh, today we hear about how the Lord goes with us, uh, specifically making us God's children in Christ. And so may that be a blessing to us as we think about who we are in our Lord and the blessings we have in Him as well. Uh, we do celebrate communion once again today, uh, the body and blood of Jesus coming to us uh, through uh, this special gift, so we celebrate that blessing once again today. Our order of worship today is uh, setting number one. We will follow that out of our hymnal. It begins on page 151. With that, let us join our voices this morning together as we sing our opening hymn, which is number 373, See Amid the Winter Snow. May the Lord bless us today. Day we do gather in the name of our triune God, 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We spend a moment in silence to reflect on God's word. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Worthy is Christ the Lord, set us free to be people of God. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. for our God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Sing with all the people of God and join in the hymn of all creation. Blessing, honor, glory, for our God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. For the Lamb who was 
Let us pray. Almighty God, you have poured into our hearts the true light of your incarnate word. Grant that this light may shine forth in our lives through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for this morning's readings. The Old Testament reading comes from 1 Kings chapter 3, beginning with the fourth verse. And the king went to Gibeon to sacrifice there, for that was the great high place. Solomon used to offer a thousand burnt offerings on that altar. At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night, and God asked, or God said, Ask what you shall what I shall give you. And Solomon said, You have shown great and steadfast love to your servant David, my father, because he walked before you in faithfulness, in righteousness, and in uprightness of heart toward you. And you have kept for him this great and steadfast love and have given him a son to sit on his throne this day. And now, O Lord, my God, you have made your servant king in the place of David, my father, although I am but a little child. I do not know how to go out or come in, and your servant is in the midst of your people whom you have chosen, a great people too many to be numbered or counted for multitude. Give your servant, therefore, an understanding mind to govern your people that I may discern between good and evil, for who is able to govern this your great people? And it pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this. And God said to him, Because you have asked this, and have not asked for yourself long life or riches, or the life of your enemies, but have asked for yourself understanding to discern what is right, behold, I now do according to your word. Behold, I give you a wise and discerning mind, so that none like you has been before you, and none like you shall arise after you. I give you also what you have not asked for, both riches and honor, so that no other king shall compare with you all your days. And if you will walk in my ways, keeping my statutes and my commandments as your father David walked, then I will lengthen your days. And Solomon awoke, and behold, it was a dream. Then he came to Jerusalem and stood before the ark of the covenant of the Lord and offered up burnt offerings and peace offerings, and made a feast for all his servants. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle lesson today is from the first chapter of Ephesians, beginning with the third verse. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places even as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him. In love, he predestined us for adoption through Jesus Christ, according to the purpose of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace, with which he has blessed us in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace which he lavished upon us in all wisdom and insight, making known to us the mystery of his will, according to his purpose, 
which he set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time, to unite all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. In him we have obtained an inheritance, having been predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will, so that we who were the first to hope in Christ might be to the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and believed in him, were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until we acquire possession of it, to the praise of his glory. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. Hallelujah, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the second chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. The child Jesus grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. Now his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover, and when he was twelve years old, they went up according to custom. And when the feast was ended, as they were returning, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem. His parents did not know it, but supposing him to be in the group, they went a day's journey. But then they began to search for him among their relatives and acquaintances, and when they did not find him, they returned to Jerusalem searching for him. After three days, they found him in the temple, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. And when his parents saw him, they were astonished. And his mother said to him, Son, why have you treated us so? Behold, your father and I have been searching for you in great distress. And he said to them, Why were you looking for me? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? And they did not understand the saying that he spoke to them. And he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was submissive to them. And his mother treasured up all these things in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and man. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. The congregation may be seated. At this time, the children are invited forward for the children's message. Good morning. How are you guys? Merry Christmas. We're still celebrating Christmas. Happy New Year. We're celebrating a new year too. So we're celebrating a lot of things today. Continue to celebrate Christmas. Continue to celebrate a new year. But in... What's that? Yeah. It, um, and so we're celebrating just the good things that God continues to give to us today. I brought some things with, uh, with me today to think about our, our message today. And if you may notice, or let me ask you, what are these things for? A baby. So I have a little diaper here. I have a baby bottle here. I have a little thing here, clothing here for a baby as well. Well, so I wanted to talk about before a baby is born, their parents... Work at getting ready. Again, before a baby is born, the parents do a lot of preparing things. So, before a baby is even born, the parents buy clothes, they buy baby bottles maybe, they buy diapers, maybe they even paint the baby's room a different color. But there's a lot of preparation that goes into getting ready for a baby. 
But what do you think? Does the baby tell the parents how to get ready before it's born? Yeah, I have some weird looks on that one, right? No, that, that doesn't work that way. The baby doesn't tell the parents how to get ready. The parents know. The parents know what the baby needs, what to get ready, what to get prepared for. In our epistle reading for today, it talks about God getting everything ready for us that we need in this life. It's kind of a long reading, but it even talks about God prepares everything for us before we're even born. Wow. It even talks about God prepares everything for us before the world is even created. Wow. But again, God knows what we need before we're even born. He knows what we need when it comes to forgiveness and eternal life. And so today's reading talks about that God prepared to send his son before you were born, before any of us were born, before the world was even formed. God prepared to send his son to give us what we need so that we are saved, forgiven, to go to heaven. And so that's why we continue to celebrate Christmas, because God has sent us his son. Jesus has come to die, to take away our sins. He has come to give us eternal life. God has prepared all of that for us. The Father has prepared all of that for us in the sending of his son. So in that way, again, a baby can't prepare for the needs it has. We can't prepare for the needs that we have. Our needs, again, are to be forgiven. Our needs, again, are to have eternal life in heaven. God, again, prepares all that for us in the sending of Jesus. And so, again, today we celebrate that as God's Word tells us about that in our reading for today. All right? Let's hold our time with a word of prayer. Would you guys pray with me this morning? Let's fold our hands and let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for caring for me. Amen. All right. Thanks, guys, for coming up this morning. Our service continues this morning with our sermon hymn number 410, Within the Father's House. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ.
Amen. Congregation may be seated. Last week, I had us imagine that the outside temperature was zero degrees and 30 below windshield. In imagining that, I said it was better to imagine it than to experience it. Well, I guess I was about a week off. <laughs> and, and worse yet, the air temperature that I picked last week was warmer than today's actual air temperature. Instead of the air temp this morning being zero, it is a bit below zero. But nevertheless, once again this morning, I would like us to imagine something. It has nothing this time to do with the weather, but it has everything to do with our identity. This morning I would like us to imagine ourselves as orphans. The reality of being an orphan may seem a bit foreign to us. Maybe the only time we thought about being an orphan is by reading a certain book or by watching a certain movie. But for this reason, I invite you to imagine what it would be like to be an orphan. Someone who has no home. Someone who has no one to call mom or dad. Someone who has no last name. Someone who has no possessions. Someone who has no true, lasting inheritance. In summary, imagine what it would be like to be an orphan who has nothing. While I invite us to imagine this morning ourselves as orphans, it is not something that we really have to imagine. Even though the concept of being an orphan may seem quite foreign to us, it's not as foreign as we think. At one point in time, you and I were orphans. Not in the earthly sense, as we normally think of it, but in the heavenly sense. Not in the material sense of the word, but in the spiritual sense of the word. God's word tells us that of ourselves, we were orphans. Someone who had no heavenly home. Someone who had no one to call our Father who art in heaven. Someone who had no lasting name. Someone who had no sense of belonging in the proper sense. Someone who had no true possessions and no true inheritance. In summary, we were orphans who had nothing. And this is who we are outside of Christ. Ephesians 2 verses 1 through 4 show us our identity outside of Jesus. It says, and you were dead in the trespasses and sins in which you once walked. Following the course of this world, following the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience, among whom we all once lived in the passions of our flesh, carrying out the desires of the body and mind, and were by nature children of wrath like the rest of mankind. So here, God's word shows us how our sins once made us orphans. People who were cut off from God. People who were cut off from true possessions. People who were cut off from an everlasting inheritance. So people in that sense, in the truest sense of being orphans. The people who are not only orphaned for this life, but children who are truly orphaned toward eternal punishment forever. But at this point, we have to notice that we are talking about being an orphan in the past tense. For being an orphan is something that we were. Being an orphan is something that we used to be. And the reason that you and I are no longer orphans is because our God has come to us. Jesus has come to us. And he has changed our status as orphans to be children of God. 
Ephesians 2, verses 5 through 7 go on to say, But God, being rich in mercy, because of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised us up with him, and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the coming ages he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace and kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. And so today's text shows us who we are in Jesus. It tells us we are God's adopted children in Jesus. And it goes to great lengths today to explain what this all means. In today's text, verse 5 says, In love he, that is God the Father, predestined us for adoption as sons through Jesus Christ according to the purpose of his will. Verse 7 says, In Him we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses. Verse 11 says, In Him we have obtained an inheritance. Verses 13 and 14 say, In Him you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and believed in Him, were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until we acquire possession of it to the praise of his glory. If you take a look at our text for today, it says the words, in him or in Christ, eight times. This is to say, of ourselves, we have nothing. This is also to say, in Christ, we have have everything. We have everything because Jesus has come to us. And Jesus says to us in John 14, 18, I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. So during this Christmas time, we celebrate the fact that our Lord and Savior has come. He has come to give us all things. As a son of God, Jesus has come to give us who he is, his holiness, his righteousness, his perfection, his purity, his goodness, his mercy, his grace, his abounding steadfast love. As a son of God, Jesus has come to give us his possessions, his power over sin, his power over death. His power over the devil. And with this also his redemption, his everlasting life, and his salvation. And the way that Jesus gives us who he is and gives us his possessions is through the waters of our baptism. For there, in our baptism, we are baptized into Christ. We are baptized into his work. Our Lord lives us in us through His Holy Spirit. By God-given faith, we live in Him. We are no longer orphans, but in Christ, adopted as children of God. As we think about being adopted children in Christ through baptism this morning, we can maybe think of it this way. The baptismal rite of the Christian church reflects the adoption process of the ancient Roman Empire. This is to say that the Romans frequently adopted heirs, and oftentimes adult heirs, because it was not uncommon for people to outlive their children. Furthermore, it was not uncommon for a high-stationed Roman to adopt a poorer, lower-stationed person. Maybe the most famous example is Caesar Augustus, who was adopted by his distant cousin, Julius. But the point is this. 
The Roman right of adoption involved renouncing the inheritance from birth parents because a person could only be the heir of one father. In a similar way, the rite of baptism has a recipient renounce the devil, all his works, and all his ways. Why? Because as we are baptized into Christ, we become adopted children of God who have an awesome inheritance. And so in Christ, we have a name, Christian. It identifies us as children of God. We know who we are. In Christ, we have a family, not just the one we are physically born into, but also the one we are spiritually born into. Around the world, we have about two billion brothers and sisters in Christ. And also, we have brothers and sisters in Christ including loved ones, we're at home in heaven with our Lord, too. In Christ, we have purpose for this life. We live to glorify our Lord. We live to love our neighbor. And in Christ, we have a heavenly Father who does provide for us, who does care for us. And in Christ, we have an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading. And as today's text says, this is all ours in Christ. And so this morning, we do not have to imagine anything in Christ. We do not have to imagine that we are orphans, because we are not. And we do not have to imagine that we are God's children, because we are. For we are God's children in Christ. We have all the blessings of God in Christ. And we look forward to receiving all the blessings in Christ for all eternity. For in Christ, all of God's blessings are guaranteed. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Now may the peace of God that passes all understanding guard your hearts and minds In Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Our service this morning continues as we speak the words of our Christian faith, found in the wording of the Nicene Creed. Please stand. We confess together. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate, He suffered and was buried. In the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and life for the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Heavenly Father, your Son diligently heard the word of God and grew in wisdom and stature, submissive to his earthly parents, and always about your business, which included being in your house. Keep the families of your church abiding in your word, eager to be found in your house, where your word and sacraments bless and give true life. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, as we continue in these first days of a new year, 
accept our thanks for all the blessing that you showered upon us in the year gone by. Blessings that were readily apparent and blessings that may have escaped our notice. Thank you for all the joyous times. Thank you for sustaining us in the challenging times. As we go into this new year, we ask your blessing upon it and hold your promises ever before us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, give patience and endurance to all who are sick or in any need. Especially we pray for Claire, Bev, Ruby, and Robin. Graciously grant them healing and sustain them according to your goodwill. Receive our thanksgiving for every blessing and kindness you have shown to your people in Christ, especially Mary Bacchus. Give comfort and hope to all who mourn, especially the family of Nancy Jurgensen. Lord, comfort them with your presence, strengthen them in your promises, and help them to focus on the cross, the empty tomb, the resurrection of the body, the joyful reunion in heaven, and the restoration of all things. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious Lord, we pray for our families. Today we pray for Derek, Paula, Dane, Devin, Dylan, and Julia Anderson. Also for Rick, Karen, Timothy, Daniel, James, and Abigail Bacchus, that they might continue to grow in their faith by turning away from sin, receiving your grace, and living according to your word. Give them what they need to glorify you in their respective vocations. Fill their lives with well-being and peace as they live in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank you that through your grace and mercy, you have established our salvation before the foundation of the world. We thank you that you have completed it in Jesus Christ. We thank you that you have revealed it to us in Jesus Christ. We thank you that you have given us your spirit so that we might believe and be saved. Continue to transform our hearts and minds so that we live as your people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, Father, we commend all these things and all for whom we pray, trusting in your Son, our Savior, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Congregation may be seated. At this time, we collect our offering.
Lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, for in the mystery of the word made flesh, you have given us a new revelation of your glory, that seeing you in the person of your Son, we may know and love those things which are not seen. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and to be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us to do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit. One God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take heed, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen.
service this morning continues with the post-communion canticle, Thank the Lord. Please stand. Thank the Lord and sing his praise. Tell everyone what he has done. Let all who seek the Lord rejoice and proudly bear his name. He recalls his promises and leads his people forth in joy with shouts of thanksgiving. Alleluia, alleluia. Let us pray. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, you have given us a foretaste of the feast to come in the Holy Supper of your Son's body and blood. Keep us firm in the true faith throughout our days of pilgrimage, that on the day of his coming we may, together with all your saints, celebrate the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom, which has no end. Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Receive the blessing of our Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. We sing our closing hymn number 390, Let All With Gladsome Voice. Blessings on your day as we uh, live it in our Lord.